Well, today, some East African nations have been in what we call the AFCON qualifiers, and I would like to obviously bring you what the results are really or we are like here in Kampala, Uganda, and in Cameroon, where the side of Kenya went ahead to lose by four goals to Lee, and that's where the title comes in through that. Kenya, Kenya beaten by Cameroon in a very bad, humiliating way. Then Uganda Cranes has gone ahead, obviously, win. So smash the like button, comment, and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rokan David is my name. I hope you guys are really having fun. It has been really some long time since we obviously came in here and really put in a shift in here, but we all know it that we are gonna put in the best of efforts in here onto this beautiful channel of ours. East Africa has been represented fully to the fullest and very many teams have gone ahead obviously take action or take part into these qualifiers. I'm gonna be letting you know what East African countries are like into these African Cup qual African qualifiers that are really gonna be happening in 2025. So let's see close to 100 likes mark in this video and continue to subscribe so that everything where it goes on the plan now uganda's gonna hit win and um it was a really highly contested game though uganda had a lion share of position but they really got limited chances i really saw uganda struggling to obviously create chances and they are not so much elite when it came to the final third performance onto that pitch of numberless stadium but Obviously, in the first half, you saw it that Uganda lacked that cutting edge to obviously get in those line breaking passes or those crosses into the mixer that could obviously threaten the side of South Sudan. And the manager, Paul Putwet, had obviously understand it better. And he took off Travis Mutiaba, who has just gone ahead to sign for Bordeaux, and went ahead to give him a very good nod and after 45 minutes he was taken off and there came in a player called alan okello alan okello in just his first touch or two three touches he went ahead to be the orchestrator of the first goal he really went in for a short corner or maybe went ahead obviously play that ball back to him and alan okello never hesitated went in for a teasing cross into the six years box area headed by Jude Semogabi to the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper stretched and really fisted that ball back into play and it landed onto the Ugandan giant defender known as Bevis Mugabe and went ahead obviously tap it in the back of the net and that's when Uganda went ahead obviously get their only goal that saw them win by one goal to nil against South Sudan and the match of Uganda and South Sudan has never gone here to be an easy one. It's always a hard one, and they always play. It's always really hard. And remember, even the last time they played here, I think Uganda beat them by one goal to nil. It was a Saint Mary's Stadium Chitende. And when they went to Kenya, Uganda had to lose to South Sudan by one goal to nil. So it shows you how hard it's really gonna be. And for Uganda, they came into this game of football and they're really having four points and they need maximum points from this double header of South Sudan because if they really win away in Sudan, it's really gonna be 10 points and I think no one will obviously be coming close to them as a country of Uganda. It looks like Uganda and South Africa are the favorites obviously get through to the African Cup of Nations as the top two leading this group. So, Uganda has won a Again, a South Sudan in a one hill in a one nil win. Goal has been scored by Bevis Mugabe, and it takes me back to the days of the Ibra Seka Jazz. Uh, you remember um, Isinde, you remember the likes of Jajawaru, uh, that is Dan Walus Himbi. Uh, there was another guy, um, the other guy was called um, uh, Ibra, uh, it was uh, uh, Mwesigwa and very many other players that came in through the Savio Kabugos. Uganda has been so much thriving on this culture of its defenders really scoring very many goals. And I know it is not really okay, but as a national team, there are certain things, there are some certain times you obviously need to see your defenders really step up. Even the recently concluded game when Uganda really beat um, Congo Brazzaville at Nambole Stadium, Uganda went ahead to beat them by two goals to nil and the opener came in through from uh, Kayondo you know Kayondo the left back of Uganda Cranes and he scored a magical goal so I tell you 
Uganda has always thrived onto our center forward, sorry, center backs and center back line scoring in goals. And today when I saw Bevis Mkwapi scoring it, I was like, good. Though it's not really he, a usual set piece because it was brought in short and it resulted into a back of the net. Then the stats of the game were as follows. 12 shots by Uganda. Um, South Sudan had four, four shots on target by Uganda. South Sudan had two, and there is one that was swept off the line in the dying minutes, and Uganda would have gone to be shocked by South Sudan. 67% ball position by Uganda. South Sudan had 33%. 491 passes completed by Uganda. South Sudan complete 151. 82% passing accuracy by Uganda. South Sudan had 68%. Then 10 fouls by Uganda, 14 fouls by Kenya, one yellow card to Uganda and two yellow cards to and two yellow cards to South Sudan, zero red cards issued to both sides, two offsides for Uganda, and then three offsides to the side of um three offsides to the side of South Sudan and key and um, Uganda had six corners and South Sudan had one and in the one one of those corners, that's where Uganda went ahead, obviously, get themselves the lead. And, obviously, that's how the game of football went ahead, obviously, end down at Nambole Stadium. South Africa is still leading Congo Brazzaville by three goals to nil. And they look like they're going to score very many goals than Uganda. But Uganda is still on top of the table because Uganda went ahead to get a point away from home. And that's what really puts them into that position to see to it that all goes on well as planned so uganda now has seven points and they are really going to be playing south sudan on monday and we are waiting to see how things are really going to be panning out now we go to kenya kenya has played away in cameroon and kenya has gonna hate to lose by four goals to nil what an annihilation that happened down in cameroon and i tell you what Japoma Stadium was really one of those stadiums that saw Cameroon really annihilate the side of Kenya. And Kenya had the following. This was starting 11 of Kenya. My Kenyan people, my Kenyan friends, you know, I think you are really not feeling okay because I think a loss wouldn't have gone here to be bad, but the margin of the loss really speaks volumes. And Matasi was in goal, Nodi, right back, Owuma, left back, Owino and Anjembe in the central defense, Odada, Akumu and Owuma in the midfield three. Then Onyango was the right forward, Obuya, left forward and Ohlunga came in through obviously the line and is the one that scored that only goal that saw Kenya really pull one back when it was to nil. Then Cameroon had Andrea Onana of Manchester United in goal. Then Tachoba right back, Tolo left back, Wo and Ngejedu into the two-man central defense. And Baleba obviously played into the CDM area. And then Basong played as a left forward. Mbuemo right winger or right forward hangola and anguisa we are the two central attack midfielders abuboka was the man responsible for playing in or leading the line and guess who went ahead to score in the eighth minute it was a penalty taken by vincent abaka then in the 39th minute martin hongora went ahead to obviously make it two for the side of cameroon then michael olunga pulled one back brian Mbuemo went ahead to obviously extend the lead back to two to two to two to back to a two goal margin after kenya had gone ahead to pull one back and it was four three then christian basong 55th minute 12 minutes later made it for one and that's how ugly it is really going down for kenya and kenya is really looking bad and i don't know what my kenyan people are really thinking about this but i know you people are really going to be flocking the comment section and you'll be here letting me know what your thoughts are about this now let's go to the stats nine shots by cameroon and kenya had six at goal all shots on target cameroon had five and this shows you how clinical they've been because If you have five shots on target and four of those cross the line, what other way of really explaining the word clinical than that? Then, 
two shots on target by Kenya and one cross the line. Then 61% ball possession by Cameroon, 39% ball possession by Kenya, 537 passes completed by Cameroon. Kenya completed 334 passes, 90%. Um, 90 percent ball pos 90 percent passing accuracy by Cameroon, 84 percent passing accuracy by Kenya, 11 fouls by Cameroon, 12 fouls by Kenya, one yellow card to both sides, zero red cards to both sides, two offsides to Cameroon and one offside to Kenya, three off three corners to Cameroon and one offside to the side of Kenya. When we go to how the table. Is really looking right now you see cameroon is having three games played and they're having seven points zimbabwe three games five points kenya three games four points and namibia three games zero points now kenya has to play cameroon that is in kampala uganda number stadium i think it's going to be on monday or tuesday then it has to play zimbabwe you know and they have to play namibia now if i'm kenya all i have to do is to force any result against Cameroon in Nambole, that is next week. Then I make sure that when I'm playing Zimbabwe and when I'm playing Namibia, I really at least raise three points. Now, that means they'll keep themselves in the picture of really qualifying. And for East African nations, I'd love to see us have many like two or three nations qualify because in most occasions we've only gonna hate to be having one you know or two but can really get two or three you know i think in the recent campaign we had um we had tanzania only that is it so would love to see more 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 other east african teams really join the party because for me you know uganda is really going to be winning and we're going to be going the reason why i believe uganda is going to be going is because in the recent campaigns uganda never had to play at home you know but with the number stadium fully um refurbished obviously everything will move on as planned so guys your thoughts on to uganda cranes one south sudan zero and kenya beaten by Cameroon by four goals to one. I welcome in the comment section below. I'm out. Bye-bye for now.